What's up? What's up? Welcome to the House of Entrepreneurs. My name is Marvin and today I'm so excited to have a special guest on the show. She's not only a dear friend of mine, but also an incredibly talented life coach who has helped many people overcome their obstacles and achieve their goals. Her passion for helping others shines through in everything she does. And I'm so honored to have her share her insight today and, and how she took a leap into, into uh, the entrepreneur space. So without further ado, please welcome Rashida. Thank you so much, Rashida, from you know for accepting my invite. Uh, I'm so so happy. Before we get into it, I the last time we talked, you you were planning to do is it a tiny house? How far is how far is that? Yes, yeah, so I I was planning to do that tiny house. I'm still working on it. Yeah. You know, we talk about dreams all the time, and sometimes yeah. you want your dreams to move faster than they are. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. it's in one of those positions, but it's still moving along. So um, I had switched builders and I was looking at some other things. So yeah, I'm in the phase where I'm figuring, I'm still figuring some details out, but I cannot wait to get to the phase where I've like uh, finally got on the schedule and the build is on its way. So that's my next step. So I'm so, so close. <laughs> yeah. So are they going to like carry the building or it's actually like, a build, building from the from the ground up so they're going to build the tiny house on a trailer yeah. and then there that trailer will be uh shipped to me uh, they'll have somebody um tow it over to me and then it'll be put on on the land so um, yeah yeah exciting. that'll be my my house yes <laughs> that's, that's exciting i want us to talk about like taking a leap into a entrepreneurship. Take me back to that moment when you said, you know what, I'm done. I want mm -hmm. to start something on my own. Yeah. You know, it's funny at 17, the Lord said, you're going to be an entrepreneur. And I was like, no, I'm not Lord. Really? Wow. <laughs> I did. I most intentionally did everything but that I got, a, I went to college. I got a full-time career, but yeah. at the end of the day, I was going to work every day and I, didn't like it. And I would say now looking back, the reason I didn't like it was because the career I was in didn't really give me the opportunity to step into the fullness of who I am. Like it just, it was just like this one thing that I was good at. It wasn't something that I was passionate about. And so the moment I was like, okay, I, I don't want to do this anymore. It was actually when I paid off my last student loan payment, because you know, or I'll say for everybody else, I'm debt free. I done De Dave Ramsey's total money makeover. Mm -hmm. I got to that last student loan payment and I realized I didn't have to make, because there's so much constriction on how much money we make because of the debt that we owe. Yeah. And so when I had no more debt, it was like, I can actually live a lot cheaper than I do now, which then allows me to explore other passions, other ways of making money other things that I want to do that I've never had before. And I was like, wow, this is a new freedom that I've never been able to experience. And so it was like, okay, if I don't want to do this job, what would I do? It mm. was such a broad question. And it was literally the sky was the limit because there was nothing saying that I had to do anything. You literally can do whatever you want. And that's, Part of the beauty with entrepreneurship, you can literally do whatever you want as long as you have somebody to sell it to, yeah. which is also the hardest part about entrepreneurship. You could do whatever you want, but yeah. <laughs> you got to find it. somebody to sell it to. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. Who needs someone who needs your services and value? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so I had all of these great skills from my old job, from my old career, but I didn't know how I was going to package that and make it something that someone would buy and be able to um, make a business out of it. And so it was really, it wasn't the, the, the choice to be an entrepreneur, to actually go back to what the Lord said when I was 17 hmm. um, and finally say, okay, Lord, I'm listening. I'm going to try. But my next question with him is, 
if I'm going to do this, well, you got to tell me what I'm going to do because I have mm. no idea what yeah. am I going to do. Mm. And so a bit of it was this journey to figure that out. And a big part of it, I think for every entrepreneur is mm. also getting to know ourselves because mm. there's a lot of things you could sell, a lot of things you could do. You could go back to your business. You could do so many things because you're that kind of self-starter, um, go get it kind of person. But what is the thing that's going to allow you to be who you are and give that away how did you find the gap you know Mm. into into coaching how did you know okay this you know this is what there's a gap here and I think Uh I can add value here yeah so it wasn't me it was it was a friend so I was on practicum in New Hampshire and I was doing this version of like freelancing kind of. And, uh, but I was, it was very, again, in that very entrepreneurial kind of in between. Mm -hmm. And I had a friend who they had a couple different businesses and she's like, man, I'm, I'm unorganized, but you like live by that planner. And I always say, I'm going to do that, but I never know how to create the habit. Would you help me? And she asked me to help her get in the habit of using her planner. And I was like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. You just do this, this, and this. So she's like, no, you're you're not understanding that not everybody can do what you do. Hmm. And it was the first time I had someone point out to me, this is something special that you can give away. It, it, it's so easy for us to assume everybody else does the same things that we do. So it's so easy to kind of just be like, oh, yeah, I'm good at it, but whatever. Everybody does that. And when she pointed that out to me, I was like, wow, maybe this is something that I could do to give away to other people. And so it that is really what started me looking at how, how can, what is the problem that I help people do? And how do I help them fix it by what she, you know, was giving me this idea around? That was how it started. Take me through that process. Like when, when, when you get a client, how do you, how do you help them? What's the first stage that you help them? Well, first, so what I ended up doing, it took me some time to really figure out how I wanted to present it as an offer, but I started with just meeting with people and I had people that were like, just help me. I had people that were and decision fatigue. I had people that were um, having a hard time connecting the dreams that they had to the things that they did today. Hmm. I had people that were so burnt out or frustrated from the different things that they were going through that they had lost themselves in the midst of that and they didn't know how to get back to it. And so it was really, again, this conversation with the Lord. He's like, well, let's just go through how we break this down and how, how I brought that about in you. And so it was what I ended up giving away was just all the lessons that the Lord had given me. So it was coming back to who am I, what makes me valuable? Um, what is, what is my character? How do I give that away? Like, what, what kind of impact do I want to le- leave on the world? How can I be intentional about that? And then taking that and saying, okay, if these are, if this is the core of who I am, how do I want to give that away? Like 10 years from now, down the line, what do I want my life to, what kind of, what do I want people to say about me? And then Mm. once you know, from the, the front, okay, this is what, this is what I want to see. This is the kind of impact I want to see in the future. How do I break that down to the things that I live today? You live your values today. And so it was, that was the exercise that I did with the Lord. And he said, okay, now go help other people. And I was like, okay, I guess I, you've already done it with me once. I guess I can start sharing it with others. And so a lot of my program has come out of this birthing of my own and seeing it help other people get connected back to all the value and things that the Lord has put in them from the beginning Mm. and learning how to use that with intentionality and give that away. You're so big on, you know, vision boards and and finding your why Mm -hmm. you know and the things that motivate us like you know i remember Mm -hmm. when we were doing some you know some work together you know you had to find why ask yourself why three times why why do you want to do that but why Mm -hmm. and why and i was like why she asked like (laughs) why why do you why is it 
that um, is so big at you know finding the inner motivation yeah. of, 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 of someone? I love that. It's a great question because if we don't get down to the core of why we do it, those outer layers, I'm, I'm going to use an onion, those outer layers can peel away so fast and you just get the nasty pungent smell, but you don't necessarily get down to the, the good part of the onion. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's the same kind of thing, or even, you know, whether you think of an orange, if, if you allow yourself to just get distracted by what's on the outside, you miss the juiciness, the sweetness of what's on the inside. And so the other way that I like to think about it, Simon Sinek writes a really great book called Start With Why. And he talks about how the people who knew what their why was, knew why it motivated them, knew how it connected to their being and their passion. Those people were able to stay true to not only themselves, but what they wanted to accomplish much better than the person who tried to do it the other way around that just said, I want to accomplish that, but didn't have any reason why. Mm -hmm. Because it was so easy to just say, I want to do this random thing. But that random thing, for example, you say you want to make a million dollars. Why? Who, who is that going to impact? Just because you can say I have a million dollars. Now it's different when you say, for example, you who has passion about um, serving your home country and empowering jobs and creating those things and being able to create economic value. When life gets hard on the journey to building that a million dollars, you will say, but I know why I'm doing this. I know who I'm doing this for. I know this is who this is going to impact. So it reminds you, this is hard. I need a break, but I'm going to keep going. Whereas mm -hmm. the person who just wants to make a million dollars just says, oh, I guess that's not meant for me. Oh, I guess it, they start making excuses. It's too easy to brush it off because they didn't have any connection to their motivation and why they wanted to do it. How do you keep someone accountable then? A lot of times, the main thing that I love to do, and we did this a little bit too, I get into monthly reflection um, mm. and it's more about that person holding themselves accountable, but I give them the tools to be able to do it and then have those conversations with me. Cause I, I become the person who's like the brainstorming, that person that understands what you're trying to accomplish. But at the end of the day, it's more about holding that person a quote accountable to themselves. So I never say this is, I never decide this is who you need to be. You decide this is who you need to be. And I'm about helping you, helping you stay aligned to who you said you want it to be. And so keeping on track with that every month that if, if, if you said, you know, I want to build a million dollars, I'm just going to keep that because it feels tangible and it feels like you can track it. If, if we've gone through the whole process and we've created a plan, a strategy for you to build that kind of money. And to be able to accomplish it. And every month I come back to you, even if you've just added 10 cents to it, you'll be able to see the progress and then be able to keep moving forward. And so that monthly reflection is about tracking yourself. Just um, like with money, it's easier to track. Did I add $10 to it? But then how do we track if we stayed accountable to ourselves? If we stayed true to our values, the monthly reflection is that is that tangible way to track the progress that we've made to those things that we said of who we want to be and how we want to live that out. Give me an, give me an example of, um, of someone who, who like you've helped and they've had such a, you don't, you don't need to like maybe mention a name, but like uh -huh. they have, they've had such a, you know, big transformation either financially yeah. or like they've met their goals and you're like, wow, I also didn't see Yeah. That. Yeah. I mean, I've had one client who she only did a couple of sessions with me, but she ended up paying off $110,000 in debt in two years. That wow. is amazing. Wow. That is amazing. I've had another in six months. She was able to not only get her business from negative 10,000 into the black, she's profiting now um, for I've had other clients that have seen the the intangible side of it of like, they come into the sessions. I remember one, one client, she came into the session and she felt so uncomfortable talking about her past yeah. because it was like, and this is not even therapy. This is not that kind of conversation, but this transformation in her where she was like, 
before her, the things that happened to her in her past were just pain, but now they were actually motivation and a point of being able to take a curse or something that the devil meant for, you know, bad and turning Mm -hmm. it into good and being able to see, wow, the Lord has literally been showing up in my life the whole time. And so all of them, you know, getting to see their, their transformations are different in different ways. But the way that I, I see it is we're stepping into a deeper level of freedom. And sometimes it's financial, sometimes it's interpersonal, sometimes it's relational. Um, but taking this, the, the chance to be intentional about it is like, I, you, you get to, you get to say, this is where I want to go and take steps to getting there. And that's the same thing that all of they did, all of them did. Um, what do, mm-hmm. what do you think? What do you think uh, people's perceptions about like coaching, you know, or finding a mentor uh-huh. when you talk about oh when you when you tell someone oh you need to find a coach what do you think people uh you know relate that to yeah so i think the biggest misconception of a coach is that i'm going to tell you what to do and it's yeah. going to be perfect and you're never going to have anything go wrong and that yeah. is the a huge myth and a huge misconception a coach it cannot tell you how to live your life better than you can. Yeah. Instead, a coach is actually the best person to have a unbiased conversation about you figuring out the best path to accomplish your goals without somebody's, you, without your mama saying, but I thought you would always be this or you would always be that. Like all of these different pressures that other people put on you based on the expectations that they want to have on your life. A coach doesn't bring that because they're like, that's not my, that's not why I'm here. I'm Mm -hmm. here to help you be who you want to be. So take all of that away and let's talk about who you want to be. Let me help you do that. Mm -hmm. And I, I love being that person because we all need that person. That's less about getting their own agenda within someone else and just empowering that person to be who they are. And the beauty of who they've been created to be. What uh, are some of the lessons that you've, you know, la- like so learned on this entrepreneurial journey? I would say, uh, you know, a lot of times we think, I would say the biggest one, a lot of times when we think with a plan, a misconception about a plan is that, oh, okay, I have a plan. Everything is going to go according to plan. Lies, absolute yeah. lies. Yeah. Yeah. That's not even the that's not even the reason to have a plan. Mm. I like to think of a plan as a G a GPS. Mm. And so you really just need to know the end destination and you need to know where you are today. And the GPS can adjust based on the speed bumps, based on the blocked off roads, the parades that are keeping you for like all of these different things that are keeping you from getting there, but it can adjust around all of those things and still get you there. And so I would say my biggest lesson I learned was, you know, back in my twenties, especially, I would get so frustrated when things didn't happen exactly the way that I thought that they should happen. Mm -hmm. And when I stopped trying to make the GPS do what I wanted to do, AKA Jesus and let Jesus do what Jesus does. Yeah. A lot more things actually happened. And not only that, it was less stressful. It was more beautiful. And I actually got to enjoy the ride because he told me where we were going. He didn't say he was going to make everything happen in that order though. And all I needed to do was keep my eye on that. And that's, that has been my biggest lesson. And one of the biggest lessons I even talked about in a session before this of helping people do. I know, I know we, we, you know, we talked about like, you know, starting, but uh, take, take me through that moment when you like, you know, had your first client, you know? Yes. You're talking about taking a leap, like you had your first client and yes. what's going on there? <laughs> yes. Okay. So. First, my first client came to me and she said, I want you to coach me. And I said, I'm not ready. And she's yeah. like, yes, you are. And I was like, no, I'm not. And it's funny because we, even when we get the things we want, it scares yeah. the living crap out of us, you yeah. know? And so I was like, I don't know, but I'm grateful for her. So 
we we did she's finally like girl we're gonna do this i said okay we're gonna do this we do our first session i remember the second i got off the session i start crying i was just like i never knew that i could enjoy giving away myself as mm -hmm. much as i did in that moment mm -hmm. like it's, I, I never knew just how much I was settling for being a tech designer. And yeah, I was making good money. I had a house, a car, I, you know, done all of those things, but it was still settling because it never gave me that kind of literally fulfillment that I was like, wow, this is literally why the Lord created me. Like I, 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 I swear for probably the first six months, every time I finished a session, I cried. Wow. Just out of pure joy, yeah. just pure joy. I'd never had anything like that, nor did I ever think it would ever happen. Mm -hmm. But here I was. Hey guys, I just wanted to come in here and ask you to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on any of our content. Now let's get back into our interview. So do you think taking that leap came just at the right moment or you, it's like God just, like, you kept procrastinating and then God was like, okay, <laughs> let me push you and they will, you know. <laughs> That's a really great question. I don't, I would definitely say nothing happens any faster than it needs to. And, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like a lot of times, so I, I'll give this illusion of it. I, the Lord gave me this vision of he and I like walking on the path and we're talking together. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you see that thing over there? And I'm like, yes. And he's like, it looks cool. Right. And I'm like, yes. And he's like, we're going to do it. And I used to get so excited and just Beeline it. I would get off the path, run towards that thing because he just pointed it out to tell me that it looked cool and that we were did in the past. And in the midst of running, he'd be in the background, like, I'm just tell you where I'm going to do And I'd already jumped the gun, yeah. but he would come after me, swoop down under me, catch me in his wind, and bring me back and say, I was letting you know where we were going. We we oh. weren't going there yet. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, so it took me a while. It took me a while to get that because it would be so easy. I would find something exciting and I would get off the path and go run towards that. But now what I've learned to do when he says, you know, hey, that thing that I just told you about, we're going to do, mm -hmm. I would then take that in, write it down and say, okay, Lord, because then I would notice we're on the path. The path is going in the complete opposite direction, even though he just told me we're going here. And I used to fight that before. I'd be like, Lord, why are we going right to go left? Why can't we just go left? Because he's like, that's where I told you to go. Mm. And so when I allowed myself to be okay with that, I would find that all the things that I needed to get to that point were over here. And I needed to go this way first to get back over here. So I bring that back to your question. Did he just push me off? Probably because... I, I had finally done all this rigmarole, gone on all these crazy different directions and these windy different roads that eventually brought me back to exactly where he told me we were going to be. But then it amazes me that we're finally here after all of that. And mm. he's and I'm like, I don't know if I can jump, Lord. And he's like, girl, if you don't get off that cliff. Now, before I'm running and jumping too early and now I'm scared to jump. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if he pushed me off because yeah. I probably needed it. But it's not, it's also that awe and the respect that, wow, look how, look what he's done mm. to get me here. And now yeah. we're here, you um, know? Yeah. Yes. So, so what are, what are some of the challenges that you've met along the way? Say it one more time. My headphones went out. I said, what are some of the challenges that you've met along the way? Yes, I know. Gosh, here's the thing. Half the challenges are probably my own stupidity. <laughs> mm. <laughs> stupidity. Stupidity is not the right word. You know, sometimes we just get in our own way, wanting to push things faster or, you know, I would say that's probably the core of it. But if I were to give like a specific example, I mean, let me think because it's not that they're not there i'm trying to think of what's a specific example more often than not it's that situation where i just said where the lord says hey this is what we're going to do and rather than being patient i just want to skip all the steps and hurry up and do it and so i've gotten better at it i'm not great at it i got to do more woosaw and like meditation and not try to run down the street when the lord is like walk and i want to run um 
that's usually my biggest problem is, is just trying, even within my business, I mean, things have been kicking up. Like even this week, I'm like, man, I kind of wanted to slow down. So here's, that's the other, that's a, actually a good way to say it. My biggest problem or struggle is that I always want to change the pace. When the Lord is going slow, I want to go fast. And when the Lord is going fast, I want to go slow. And yeah. he's like, if you just sync up with me, we'd be good. And I'm like, yeah. I don't really know how to do that. <laughs> and sometimes yeah. I have to reset myself and say, just go at his path. If it pace, if he's going slow, be okay. You're you're probably needing this deep breath so that when you get to that fast pace, you'll be okay and you'll be able to keep up with it. Otherwise, you're gonna be out of breath because you were too busy trying to run too fast when you're moving slow. So yeah. Yeah, that's that's I would say is my probably my biggest struggle. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's uh, I think that's a struggle for most people. I think this I'm I'm like that also. Like when I when I'm when I've I've focused on something and it's not happening like that that's that soon. Yeah, like sometimes I you know I need like the rope like go to put the rope in my waist and say no you you know like. <laughs> you know, come back, we are, you know, you're going ahead of me. And, you know, uh-huh. that's really challenging sometimes because you, you're like, yeah, you know, God, we are being slow on this, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I get you. I get you on that. I understand. Yes. It is a challenge. Yeah. It I, is. I was talking to someone, I was talking to someone and uh, I think on Sunday and I was, they were saying, I, my challenge right now is to, is to know what is my part in this and what is God's part in this? Uh-huh. And I was like, wow, that's that's so good. I think I need I need to be asking God, like, okay, God, I want to do, you know, like I know you've told me this, but uh, oh, we are go- this is where we're going. Mm-hmm. But I need to know what my what's my part in this. Yeah. What's your part, you know? Um, yeah. So yeah. what so uh what what do you think are like oh, maybe three qualities that someone who is maybe doing coaching that should uh-huh. have if they want to get into coaching? Three qualities for someone who wants to get in coaching. Um, I would say the biggest one is you have to, this is something the Lord had to teach me very early. Um, actually, like I learned this as a kid because I, so growing up, I had to take care. I had to raise um, my nieces and nephews mm. um, as a child myself. And I, the biggest struggle I had was that I could see more potential in them than they could see in themselves. So I always wanted to push them further than they were ready to go. And as a coach, it's very easy to want to push someone further than they themselves are ready to go. You Mm got to give them the opportunity to grow at their own pace. Um, Uh, you get to be a guide. You don't get to be um, a mule pulling them along. (laughs) You you don't get to drag anybody to where you think they should go. You have to be okay with allowing that person to progress at their own pace and find their own and, and be a part of that path without, you know, shaming them or giving them any, any hassle for not moving any faster than you want them to move. So I would say that's number one. Um, I would say the other thing too, is being okay with saying, I don't know, what would you do? This is your life. I can give you tons of suggestions, but at the end of the day, it's not my decision. It's Uh, yours. uh, And otherwise, if you're not doing that, you're being like their mother or their father or any other influence in their life that is pushing outside expectations on them rather than allowing them to choose what expectations they want to live by. Mm. So we have to choose to not impress our own, our own agenda. Like at the end of the day, I can ask you 20 million questions that make you think about it all these different ways, but at the end of the day, it is your choice. Mm. So what do I, how do I help you do that? So I would say that's the next thing. Um, Let me see. What's the third thing? I think the other thing, the last thing is paying attention and being willing to give constructive criticism in an encouraging way. And a lot of times it's kind of allowing, again, 
it's kind of leading this conversation with themselves. Yeah. So, you know, for example, let's take a, a, a goal, a, whatever the goal is, say someone has decided they come back to me and they're probably in, usually it happens when they're in some kind of decision fatigue where they're feeling like I've made so many decisions. I just don't want to make this one because what if it goes wrong? That's generally how they're feeling, but it's your life. So they really can't really delegate that decision to somebody else. So, you know, it's okay. Especially as an entrepreneur. And I would say thinking about the hardest transition for most entrepreneurs, it's moving from being an employee where you can go to your boss and say, boss, what do I do? When to being the boss and the person that everybody comes to you and you have to decide, mm. you know, it's taking on that ownership, that responsibility for yourself, whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're a person who hasn't had to do or make all of those decisions before. So how do I help them take ownership for themselves is what it comes down to is kind of reversing the question. You come to me and you say, you know, I could do this. I could do that. I could do this. And I'm like, okay, cool. But they're like, but what about this? What about this? What about this? What should I do? Mm. And my question is, well, what should you do? <laughs> what, yeah. what are you leaning to? And it, then it becomes more of, I, it, it's helping them see, I, again, as a life coach, you think that I'm here to take responsibility of your life. I'm not. I'm here to help you think through how to best take responsibility with the information that you know today so that you can make the best decision to move forward for your life, but I can't take responsibility for your life. And mm. so a lot of time is, you know, having those conversations. I mean, even just that telling somebody I can't take responsibility for your life is usually pretty challenging to hear because they want to give it, they want to give that responsibility away. It seems easier. We do it to the Lord all the time. Lord, I want to decide what to do. And he's like, cool, I just, are we going to be, do you want me to be a tyrant or do you want me to be in relationship with you? Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to be, and he says to us, I'm not going to be a tyrant. You get to decide. Yeah. I'm going to be in relationship with you. Same thing as coach is doing, the same thing. There's some, um, I'm sure there's someone maybe who is, it could be either coaching, they want to get into something, but but they're scared of that transition uh -huh. you know, from getting a, a paycheck, a steady income and all uh -huh. this uh, in, into full-time entrepreneurship. Uh -huh. what's, what's your advice? How, how should they transition? Well, there's two ways that I would say there's on one hand where I say you just leap and you figure it out as you go, because sometimes we do just need to get started. That's not my preference, but it also very much depends on the situation. So it's very situational that I would say that um, not to do it. I mean, because I very much started with just kind of leaping. But if I could go back and do it again, I wish that I would have really took to heart finding someone to take me under their wing. And that would have taken patience that I don't think at that time I was really ready to give. Yeah. So I, I was, I jumped and leaped. And so I understand, I completely understand why so many people just get started. And then later they come back around to getting a coach because at that point, when you're, when you're feeling desperate, you're not really willing to invest in finding the help or paying for the money, paying the money to get the help or all of those things. You know what I mean? It's not until you get into it and you've kind of smacked a wall that you're like, okay, I finally got to stop and get help. So even though that's the way I would love to see people do it because it is easier in the long run, nine times out of 10, they're not going to do it that way. They're just going to leave. But those are the two options that I would say. If you can, find an apprenticeship, find a mentorship, find mm -hmm. someone who is going to help you, who's going to help show you the dynamics of what you're getting into so that you can get all of it that you can from every experience um, versus just leaping and trying. And it's not, neither one are bad. Just le leaping and trying are, is not bad. It just usually creates a lot of back and forth, a lot of wastage, a lot of yeah. figuring it out, a lot of kind of hardship at the beginning because we just don't know, nor do we have anybody to stop us and say, wait, 
let me give you another perspective on what you're trying to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Um, last question: Would you give uh, like an advice to someone who is right now they are they are facing you know uh, they are in, deep in, into like either debt or business? They are, things are not working out, and they are almost mm -hmm. quit, quitting on entrepreneurship. Like, what do you have to say to them? And then uh, you can you know how how can people you know connect connect with you? Yeah. Um, my biggest advice, if you are feeling like you're at wit's end and you're burnt out and you're like, I just don't know if you can do this. I don't know if I could do this anymore. I first say, just stop. We get so into movement, 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 movement. Mm -hmm. We get so close to it, so close to it that we can't see the forest for the trees. And so stop and then take a massive step back. That's so much why I'm so passionate with vision. And I'm passionate about looking at that kind of stuff on a regular basis because it gets you in a habit of seeing the being in the midst of it, but taking a step back to see this big picture. It is a skill to learn how to do both where you mm -hmm. zoom into what you're doing today, but stepping back to see how it fits into the big picture, but zooming in to do the work and stepping back out. And a lot of times we've been too close for too long to be able to re be reminded of why we're doing what we're doing and what it's going to bring on the other side. So my biggest suggestion, step back and let yourself see that. Um, Cause it really does change your perspective mm -hmm. and all the things that you all the options that you didn't necessarily realize are, are available when you're not as close, you see so many more options than when you were no nose deep into it. When you were mm. this close, you yeah. got to step back in order to see that. So yeah, I'm passionate about, about that step back and then you can jump back in. But by that time, you'll have a whole new perspective, be refreshed on it and, and, really be able to go back into it a different person than what you were before if you really give that a chance to happen so yeah yeah and then you asked uh something how, else yeah how can people connect with you yes okay so you can email me at rashida at rashida o.com or rashida at the dreamcatcher framework.com um, you can find me on Instagram at your dream strategist. Um, I have a YouTube channel, but I haven't really started posting videos on there. So I would, it, the best place to find me is either on my website at rashidao.com. You can email me from the website, or you can find me on Instagram at your dream strategist is my handle. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we'll be dropping, uh, your information in the description. So I want to thank you so, so much for, you know, allowing and, you know, to come and share your experience on entrepreneurship and taking a leap. Thank you so, so much, Rashida. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yes. Thank you for having me. Thank you so, so much, guys, for watching. I would want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on any of our content. You can like and share and please leave us a comment on what you thought about uh, this episode. Thank you so much.